I want to introduce our team. We're um, all analysts at the Fulton Schools of Engineering. I'm the data, uh, I mean, the team lead for the FSE data team. My name is Erin Gertz, and I'm a principal planning analyst. And Yay. next, <laughs> who am I handing it to? So that was my announcement earlier. <laughs> I think you're next. Good morning. My name is Nicole Placecki, and I am the business intelligence analyst on the FSE data team. Um, my background and kind of focus expertise area is in student data. Um, but as we're building our team out, we're trying to make that more broad. So that's my background. My name is Megan Maurer. I'm the senior planning analyst on the FSE data team. Uh, my primary focus is in financial and HR data um, with a little bit of I mean, finance touches everything, HR touches everything. So a little bit of everything. I'm Todd Kemper. Um, so I'm on the same FSE team, but I'm on the learning and teaching hub. Um, so we kind of focus more on the learning analytics or learner analytics, trying to figure out what works and doesn't work for the student and for the course. Um, started in OPB in the planning and budget office. Then I was an ET doing data and visualization for a while and then came over here. Hi, and I'm Laura Schuler. I am the latest addition to FSE's data team, and I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> no, I am a uh, management research analyst senior, so um, I'm supporting the entire team, and they're supporting me. It's kind of great. Um, for today... So we're going to go through a few things. We're going to do an icebreaker and then um, the bulk of the time will be spent in discussion. And then at the end, we'll, we'll conclude with how to do future collaboration. And then, Tag, I'm at. Okay. So some of you went to the same um, conference where I got this idea, but I loved it. This icebreaker is going to get you up and off your feet. We have a little blue line right here on the side. So what we want you to do is come to the line and then get on the side of the line that you most identify with. And this is just a way for us to get to know each other and our habits. So come on, get up. You know you want to move. You've been sitting all morning long. <laughs> Perfect. So what is your collaboration style? What do you most identify with? And I know you guys want to straddle that line. Don't. There's only one answer. All right. Take a look around and see the faces. See how, how your colleagues like to collaborate. And this is good to know. Hey, we're pretty well evenly split between those. I'm looking for bias here. I'm looking to see if it's a generational thing or if it's a gender thing, or if it's an experiencing who's traveling, what are you telling? Uh-uh, pick a side, any side. All right, she's not gonna pick a side. We're not gonna make her. All right, this looks pretty good. We're about evenly split. Oops. And I went backwards. All right, what about this? a lot of straddlers there, huh? I mean, because how many of us do everything? Yeah, it's kind of hard, but it looks like, looks like we're pretty student data heavy. So it looks like you're going to have a whole lot of support in that area I like that. That way. Whoa. And <laughs> now things get serious. Look at this. Okay. A lot of us are on tiny teams, huh? A lot of us feel like we're, well, no, it's, it's, no, there's no right or wrong for interpretation. See, I interpreted it one way, you saw another. Yeah, are you on an island? <laughs> it's kind of scary out there on that island, isn't it? <laughs> I don't have to say anything about this one, right? Okay. We have some fans, though. We have some fans. I like that. And finally, a 
everybody's going, what does this one mean? Any takers? Anybody want to guess? Like, do you think like a computer? Or do you think like an accountant? <laughs> yeah, how do you get your job done? Which way do you work? A lot on the, <laughs> a lot of you on the lines. All right, I'm going to ask Erin to come back up here before you sit down, though. She's going to ask you to do something very important. So we put pink paper. Hopefully this works. We put pink papers on the table. We want to encourage great discussion. So can you move to the tables with the pink papers so we can have good conversations together? And then, oh, yeah, good room. And sit with people you don't normally work with. Okay. All right, while you're finding your seats. So take a minute to introduce yourselves, share what teams you're from or what colleges you're from. Yeah, and there's uh, sign-in sheets on the tables if you don't mind filling out your name and information. No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's fun. Here's three. Everyone introduce themselves. Okay. All right, so today we're going to cover various topics related to work we do in the colleges as data teams. We're going to talk about our, our relationship to our top leadership, how we handle ad hoc and recurring requests, the types of metrics we pull, useful uh, tools, and how we're using AI. And at the end, talk about how we don't want to reinvent the wheel and how we can lean on each other. So the first question we're starting with is, what is your team's relationship with your dean and or top leadership? And we'll give you just a couple of minutes and then we'll regroup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So wrap it up. So now I'm going to call on some tables. Does anyone want to share with what they found at their tables? Anybody, how do you have, how do you relate to top leadership? Can I ask one of you to share what you found? Oh, he was just finishing. I was just not. I can speak. Okay. okay. So um, my name is Belinda Gutierrez, and I actually work for um, the Maricopa Community College District, um, South Mountain Community College. And so um, the question the question was raised, how does your um, how's our relationship with our dean and or leadership? Um, so our office reports um, directly under the president. And so I report to a dean who then reports to the president. So much of the relationships that we have with our leadership is very strong. Um, it's um I would say very positive, but it's also very, um, we're as accessible to the leadership team as possible um, because much of the the decisions that are being made at the campus are th surrounded by the data. So um, I would say that having that sort of direct line of contact um, with the leadership is important because um, without the data, it's very difficult to make some of those, you know, challenging decisions um, at that leadership level, so. I'm glad you're here. Anyone else want to share? We can move on. Um, our team is mostly located up on the dean's floor. So similarly, very accessible to top leadership. Okay, the next question is, what is your strategy for managing your time between ad hoc, recurring, and large-scale data requests? So we'll wrap it up and prepare to share.
Is there anyone who wants to share? Or do I call on somebody? Anyone? Is there someone from your table who wants to share? Thank you. Okay, so um, I work for WP Carry, and kind of how we handle it. So Maria and I are on the same team here, and we get a lot of reoccurring every day, a lot of ad hoc, and then she, um, we get a large amount of large scale ones that come in from like deans and stuff. So we've kind of just split it in half, where I'm now handling the reoccurring or the ad hoc, and she's handling those like ten year long requests. You know, those really large ones that are tedious. Um, it's just kind of a divide and conquer on our small island, and that's how we've been able to stay afloat right now. <laughs> Would you mind sharing what you shared? I thought it was, I just felt your pain. <laughs> I feel like what we all could hear. So I'm with Mary Lou Fulton Teachers College, and I was just saying I wish we had a better way of prioritizing what comes in because... Um, because it seems like it's a lot of it is just the luck of the draw someone who submits a request at a time when we have a few minutes so we'll we'll work on their request um and that would allow us to manage our time better if we knew as a department that there was a a systematic way of prioritizing all the work that comes in it it all feels very ad hoc often Okay, so the next question is, what metrics are most commonly requested for measurement or reporting? It's not very green. Uh, there are problems the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Throughout our office. So it's on my personal. It's hard to get all their ideas too. <laughs> like in China, like most of them, there's a lot of people talking. So like, we're not really capturing. So maybe that's a good question. Yep. But, I was all talk, and some people are still up. Okay, how do we yeah. now? Yeah. I mean, that's fine, kind of. I'll come like, back in. One of those ones are capturing the data. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe we'll that slide. And just kind of add that in just because it's hard to capture everything we can ask and talk. Yeah. But that's a place we can do it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 Yeah, I So they have certain expectations of exactly how like reports should be formatted and the order of things and the order of columns and if I Oh, 
they can probably tell us why it's going to be a lot of too. Yeah. Well, I'm doing it. So we're going to start wrapping it up. Have they had a good idea? Go. Okay. I'll pick on them. Can I can one of you share? Do you want like sharing? We're picking on you, David. <laughs> No, no. Oh, oh, that's really good. Do you want to? Okay, guys, we're going to come back and um, I'm going to share just some insights that I heard while I was walking around. And one of the fascinating things that I heard and have experienced is that you'll get a data request and it'll sound pretty straightforward, but once you start digging into it, you pull one string and it affects something over here and that affects something over here. And so everything is really intra-related, intra interrelated, interrelated, words are hard. Um, and so it's like, you start with what's commonly requested and it's kind of everything which is sometimes fun and sometimes not. Anyone else have any insights? Comments, questions, concerns? No? I agree. I agree. Okay. So now, um, what are the non-enterprise tools you find most useful? And how are you using AI?
told your your project to us. I think this is one of those conversations that could have lasted the whole 50 minutes and then some. Um, I'm curious to hear what a lot of you discussed. I'm going to come back here and pick on the WP Carry table to see. <laughs> it was the worst one. We use, I guess, 99.9% .9 enterprise technology. And our only AI usage is potentially Grammarly for sending out. <laughs> I like that. I like that. So I, I do know that you guys do share some little like um, um, shortcuts and things like that amongst yourself, things that make things. Re re read the question. I'm picking on I'm I'm picking on Justin because, but no, it doesn't have to be data related. Just those tools that are non enterprise. I mean, enterprise gives us tons of stuff, right? But we still have our favorites that aren't enterprise, right? I <laughs> we use Miro. You use Miro, right? So, all right, we got Miro over here. I like that. That's a good one, too. What about y'all? Something I, something I brought up in terms of, like, querying is, you know, you might get a query from, like, a, a different reporting system, and, you know, you're trying to really decipher it quickly, or you write something ad hoc that's pretty ugly. Uh, we use this thing called Poor SQL, which is like a website, and you can enter it in, and it'll just spit out a really nice format. It's uh, SQL, so something like that. It's called Poor SQL. Oh, that sounds cool. Poor SQL. Oh, I get it. All right, that's going on the top of my list. See, we just all learned something. Anybody else use Poor Le Poor SQL? Yeah. See, I don't, but I will. You want? Um, so two of them um, for sort of project management pieces. Uh, my team uses Trello very extensively. Um, we all love it and it's great. Um, in terms of like leveraging AI, I do love a chat GPT um, for a couple of different things. Um, one, we talk mostly about um, I'm a team of one, like I'm not even a full FTE of data, like that is it. Um, I'm, And so I don't have anyone else to talk to when I'm like trying to come up with stuff. And so um, I'm a lot of times use chat GPT to like come up with like syntax for something I'm trying to write that I'm struggling with figuring out and I have nobody else to ask. So it's been very helpful for that, but also for writing job descriptions. Um, yeah. It's fantastic. <laughs> or like just general, like um, re emails for like, we, we talk about like using data for, um, you know, supporting student enrollment and things like that. You can write lovely emails and things like that very easily in chat GPT. Thank you. All right. And I know we, we had a discussion over here. You don't have to talk about the chat GPT. You can tell us about something else, but what did y'all come up with at this table? I know. <laughs> so I work for the university college. Uh, I'm the data analyst there and they use a lot of monday.com, which is, um, I have no idea, project management tool, I guess. Uh, but it does a lot of stuff and you can put tables in there and then you can have it create graphs and like it does it um, it's pretty user friendly so like rather than me like having to create a tableau dashboard for like everything people in university college want like they also have some power to create their own graphs and look at their own stuff which like speeds things up problem is you need to get the data into monday.com which is vetted like in terms of like data privacy and stuff but there's not like an automatic process where I just click something in Alteryx and like, there it goes into monday.com. So that's the downside. Wow, hopefully y'all are getting a whole bunch of different ideas to leave here with. Okay, so moving on to the next question. Are you comfortable using other units queries if they're provided to you? And how do you feel about sharing yours? So this is the reinventing the will. Yeah. Yeah. 
but starting with our What you know? What other? Uh, what's your data for? Yeah. And so one of the things that I am trying to do is to see those Start wrapping it up. I wrote a question. A good question. Start it out slow, but there's good conversation yeah. going on. Yeah, it's eleven forty three. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's come back together.
Uh, I thought this one um, I, I sounds like really great conversation, but I thought we could just do a show of hands and then maybe share if you feel led. Um, how many of you? How many of you always start with something pre-built that you're now tweaking? <laughs> okay. And how many of you have actually shared something you built with somebody outside your team? Awesome. And do you have examples of? Side queries that you're willing to say out loud <laughs> to the group. <laughs> I know I just um, used these um, enriched tables to rework our ASRs query. And it feels like something that if one person does it, everybody doesn't need to do it. I mean, you know, you're going to have to tweak it to make it fit your college, but that's my example. Anyone have an example of something you might be willing to share? Thanks. I um, work with some advisor data and I'm now trying to remember, yeah, for like a student trying to find both the advising unit and then who are the actually advisors and what are the email addresses associated with that. And that's like three or four tables in the warehouse that you're combining there. Um, so that was a little painful and <laughs> I'd be willing to share that. Anyone else? Yes, that's my next question. <laughs> so show of hands, how many of you have used either the SQL or the Altrix repositories? Okay, awesome. Show of hands, how many people don't know what I'm talking about? <laughs> okay, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to tell you where it is, but um, Josh Johnson sort of spearheaded putting together, if you have good SQL, to put it into a SQL repository. It's in an FSX drive that's, or, or <laughs> and then similarly, there's an Altrix one and some of it is just SQL slapped into an Altrix workflow. So you can go to either. Um, I think there's a document that says that, you know, the names of names of what is in there. So you can search through that document and then there's comments at the top to sort of tell you how to use the query. So some tool that we should be using for sure. And that's what I don't want this to be about is, you know, building another repository, but I want it to be about forming a community, leaning on each other. So that leads to my next point, which is where do we go from here? Um, and we thought the lowest hanging fruit, the easiest way to stay together without putting a burden on anybody was to create a Slack channel. So we've created a college data collab private Slack channel. So if you've signed up on the sign-in sheet, we'll add you. You can, of course, choose to leave if you don't want to be part of it. But um, more of a private community where we can share things um, that maybe you wouldn't feel super comfortable posting out on where's that data. I mean, I feel like there's there's stuff that I, I'm like, I don't want this to be seen by hundreds of people. But maybe if it's, you know, this community that where we're learning each other's names and part of each other's teams and want to help each other. So I, and we've had such good conversation here today. We can keep on having these discussions and learning from each other. So does that sound good? Yes. Awesome. <laughs> Data people who ask those questions. By the time I get to you. Okay. So, um, it, of course, if you have a co worker who couldn't make it and they want to be a part of the channel, you know, let us know um, and we'll get them added. Um, I just love to, moving forward, learn to lean on each other a little bit more, especially some of these sort of odd requests that come from nowhere and you don't have the time to go learn the tables and, and make sure that you have it perfect before they need it. You know, so in summary, we all have unique challenges as uh, college data folks. So I'm hoping you today found some colleagues that you can work with. And in summary, uh, or to wrap up, if you would just make sure you share your information on the sign in sheets, if you want to join our Slack channel and be part of future conversations, and we'll hopefully keep that thing active and um, engage you. So we welcome you to reach out to us. I thought this just this week, I've thought of so many examples like like the uh, U.S. news problem, if anyone's feeling our pain on that one, where it'd be nice to have a group that you're panicking with. 
um, for example. So yeah, thank you everyone. <laughs>